Hi everyone, welcome to this class, Basic Microeconomics. Our topic is the 10 principles of economics. Before we tackle these 10 principles of economics, let us first define economics. So the word economy comes from the Greek word oikonomos, which means the one who manages household or the one who manages society's resources. So why is it important to manage society's resources? So the management of society's resources is important because resources are scarce. When we say scarce or scarcity, it means that society has limited resources. Thus, they cannot produce all the goods and resources or all the goods and services that people wish to have. So when we say economics, economics is the study of how society manages its scarce resources or economics is a social science that deals with the study of production, distribution, and consumption of goods and services. So now let's go to the 10 principles of economics. The 10 principles of economics is basically divided into three parts. So the first part, which is the principle 1 to 4, discuss on how people make decision. The second part, which is principle 5 to 7, tackle on how the people interact. And the last part, which is principle 8 to 10, tackle on how the economy as a whole works. So let us discuss one by one. So let's begin with principle 1, which is people face trade-offs. So this principle is summarized in the adage, there is no such thing as a free lunch. To get one thing that we like, we usually have to give up another thing that we like. So making decision requires trading of one goal against another. So halimbawa, may isang hapon na nag-decide ka na matutulog ka or magpapahinga. But suddenly, may tumawag na friend mo na nag invite na pumunta kayo ng mall, kakain, manood ng sine, maglakwat siya, and so on. So, ang pinili mong decision is, hindi ka na matutulog at sasama ka dun sa friend mo. So, yung oras na kinunsyo mo dun sa mall kasama ang friend mo na load ng sino or kumain is equivalent sa oras na sana na itulog mo or na ipahinga mo. So, that's the basic example of how people face trade-offs. So, another trade-off society faces is between efficiency and equity. So efficiency is a property of society getting the best it can from its scarce resources. And equity is the property of distributing economic wealth or economic prosperity fairly among the members of the society. So halimbawa, when the government decides to redistribute income from the rich to the poor. So halimbawa, binigyan lang ng gobyerno ng ayuda is yung mga mahihirap mga mayayaman hindi na nila binigyan. So, ano magiging impact nito sa economy? So, maybe it reduces the reward for working hard or as a result, people work less and produces fewer goods and services. So, nawawala ng efficiency. So, at this point, the government should decide or should choose between efficiency and equity. Acknowledging life trade-offs is important because nakakapag gawa tayo ng best decisions based sa mga available options. So, mas nagigit tayo better off. So, second principle is the cost of something is what you give up to get it. Since people face trade-offs, making decision requires comparing the cost and benefits of alternative courses of actions. Halimbawa, ang decision mo ay pumunta ng college. So, ano magiging cost ng decision mong pumunta ng college? So, ang magiging cost mo dito is yung tuition fee, yung travel expense kung malayo ka sa school, boarding house expense kung nag-board ka, food allowance, internet expense. So, ano naman ang magiging benefits? So, ang magiging benefits dito is intellectual enrichment and better job opportunities after graduation. So, dito napapasok yung opportunity cost. Ano ang opportunity cost? Opportunity cost is the cost of giving up something in order to attain the next best alternative or whatever must be given up to get some item. So, in making decisions, the decision maker should be aware of the opportunity cost that accompany the possible action. But the third principle is 
rational people think at the margin. So ano yung tinatawag na rational people? Ano ang tinatawag na margin? Rational people are people who are systematically and purposefully do the best they can to get or to achieve their objectives. When we say margin, it simply means edge. So kapag rational people ka daw, is dapat marunong ka mag-adjust at marunong kang gumawa ng decision based sa marginal benefits and marginal cost ng decision mo. So marunong ka dapat mag-adjust sa marginal changes. So ano yung tinatawag na marginal changes? It is a small incremental adjustment to the original plan of action. So halimbawa, halimbawa ako driver, may kasama akong conductor. So bumabiyay ako from Cubao to Bicol. So halimbawa, yung dinadala kong, so halimbawa, ang dinadrive kong bus is air-conditioned bus. Tapos yung fare is 1,500. So, so halimbawa, hindi naman peak season. Tapos, before ako magbiyay papuntang Bicol or pauwi ng Bicol, na-recognize ko na may 15 pang bakante or 10 bakante. Pero marami pang pasahero sa terminal ng Cubao. Kasi hindi nila kaya yung 1,500. Willing silang sumakay sa bus ko kung babawasan ko ng 500 yung pamasahe nila. So gagawin ko na lang daw na 1,000 each. So, so sampo silang pasahero. Gagawin ko daw na 1,000 each na lang. So kung hindi ako papayag at wala na ding sasakay sa bus ko, so wala nang madadagdag na kahit piso sa biyahe ko from Cubao to Bicol. Pero kung mag-iisip ako, pero kung iisipin ko yung marginal benefits, so papayagan ko silang sumakay ng 1,000 lang yung pamasahe nila, may madadagdag sa income kong 10,000 kasi 10 sila, tig 1,000 kada isa. So dapat, ang magiging decision ko kung rational driver ako or kung rational ako mag-isip is tatanggapin ko yung sampung pasahero na willing magbayad ng 1,000 kahit hindi na yung original fare na 1,500 kesa walang madagdag na income or walang madagdag sa kikitain ko sa isang araw from Biko, from Cubao to Bicol. Principle 4, people respond to incentives. So anong incentive? Incentive is something that induces people to act. So halimbawa, kapag pumunta ka ng mall, So, may plano kang bumili ng Apple. Pero pagpunta mo ng mall, nakita mo na tumaas yung presyo ng Apple. Tapos, nung pagpunta mo dun sa section ng grapes, is nakasale yung grapes. Nasa 50% off. So, hindi mo nabibilhin yung Apple kasi nagmahal. So, ang gagawin mo is mag-respond ka sa incentives. So, pupunta ka dun sa grapes na naka 50% off. Another example, halimbawa nag-iisip ka na ngayon na bumili ng sariling car. Pero habang nagdi-decide ka na bumili ng sariling car, is biglaan namang nagtaas yung presyo ng gasolina. So, bibili ka pa ba or hindi na? So, kung iisipin mo yung incentives, mapapamahal ka or dadagdag yung gastos mo. So, for the meantime, kung ako ang bibili ng car, ititigil ko muna at mas mapapamura ako sa pag-commute. Part 2 is how people interact. So, pumunta na tayo sa principle Five. Principle 5, trade can make everyone better off. So, paano nga ba nakakatulong maging better off yung trade sa everyone? So, alimbawa sa family. So, hindi naman tayo makakapag-produce ng mga bagay na kailangan natin. So, may may produce tayo pero hindi lahat. So, alimbawa, so hindi naman natin kayang mag-produce ng sarili nating internet connection. Hindi naman natin kayang mag-produce ng sarili nating mobile phones. Or kung gusto natin kumain ng tinapay kung hindi tayo baker, So, hindi naman tayo makakagawa ng tinapay. So, we need to interact with one another. So, halimbawa naman sa countries. So, may mga resources na hindi available sa Philippines. Kaya, kailangan nating maghanap ng resources na yon sa ibang bansa. And vice versa. May mga resources din na hindi available sa ibang bansa na available lang sa Philippines. Kaya nga nagkakaroon ng imports and exports. Trade between two countries can make each country better Of. Principle 6. Markets are usually a good way to organize economic activity. So, mayroon tayong tinatawag na market economy. So, anong market economy? So, market economy is an economy that allocates resources 
through the decentralized decisions of many firms and households will be interact in the market for goods and services. So firms decide whom to hire or what to produce. Households decide which firm to work and what to buy with their incomes. So dito na papasok yung invisible hand ni Adam Smith. So ano tong invisible hand? Ito yung nagpapaliwag na, na market can stand alone without government intervention. So kayang-kayang patakbuhin or kayang-kayang pagalawin ng firms and households ang market without government intervention kapag yung interaction nila ay nagkakaresulta ng desirable market outcomes. So what if hindi na nagkakaroon ng desirable market outcomes ang interaction ng firms at saka ng households. So, hindi naman lahat ng panahon or hindi lahat ng oras is kailangan lang hayaan ng government yung market. Dito na papasok yung ating principle 7 na government can sometimes improve market outcomes. So, why do we need government intervention? One reason why we need government is that invisible hand can work its magic only when government enforces rules and maintain institutions that are key for a market economy. Most important, markets work only if property rights are enforced. So what is property rights? Property rights it is the ability of an individual to own and exercise control over scarce resources. So halimbawa, farmer ako. So hindi na ako magpapatuloy mag-farm or hindi na ako mag-continue magtanim kung yung mga pananim ko is lagi lang naman nananakaw at hindi napaparosahan yung magnanakaw. Kung restaurant owner ako, so hindi na ako nagtatayo ng negosyo or hindi na ako mag-continue ng transaction ko or ng negosyo kong restaurant kung lagi lang naman tinatakbo ng customer ko yung mga bills ng hindi napaparosahan. So, that action ay hindi na desirable sa market outcome. So, that is the reason kung bakit kailangan na ng government intervention. Another example, kung bakit kailangan natin ng government intervention, halimbawa, nagkakaroon na ng market failure dahil sa externalities and abuse of market power ng mga ibang firms sa market. So, kailangan nang gumawa ng way yung government para matigil yung market failure or para makontrol yung market failure. So, ang ating last part is how the economy as a whole works. Principle 8, a country's standard of living depends on its ability to produce goods and services. So, dito na papasok yung productivity. So, anong productivity? It is the quantity of goods and services produced from each hour of a worker's time. So, halimbawa, sa isang country na maraming businesses na maraming firms then imagine sa lahat ng businesses na yun is maraming productive na employees so kapag maraming productive na employees sa isang business so maraming produce na goods and services so ang magiging outcome nito sa business is magkakaroon ng business growth so pag nagkaroon ng business growth pwede magkaroon ng business expansion. So, kapag dumami ang business or kapag nagkaroon ng business expansion, mangangailangan yung business ng additional worker. So, mag-hire sila ng additional worker. So, tataas ang ating employment rate at babawas ang ating unemployment rate. And then, magkakaroon ng additional income yung households dahil sa pagkakaroon ng bagong trabaho. Principle 9. Prices rise when the government prints too much money. So, bakit daw nagkakaroon ng inflation kapag yung government nagproduce ng napakaraming pera? So, let us first define inflation. So, inflation is the increase in the overall price level. So, siguro natanong nyo na din ang sarili nyo before. Kasi ako dati, way back elementary or high school, natanong ko yung sarili ko nito. Bakit kaya hindi pwedeng gumawa ng napakaraming pera yung gobyerno at ibigay na lang sa mahihira? So ano nga ba yung sagot? Bakit hindi pwede? Kasi nga, when the government prints too much money, the price rises. Halimbawa, nag 
nagkaroon ng monetary injection sa economy. So, lahat ng tao na may hirap is nagkaroon ng maraming pera. Kapag maraming hawak na pera ang tao, ano ang mangyayari sa kanyang purchasing power? So, lalakas or tataas yung kanyang purchasing power. Kaya niyang bilhin lahat ng gusto niya. Kapag maraming pera, tataas yung spending ng isang tao. So, kapag tumaas yung spending, lalaki yung demand. So, kapag lumaki yung demand, papataasan ng mga business yung kanilang price. Yung pagtaas ng demand dito, hindi dahil sa pagbababa ng price. Kasi nga, tumaas dito yung price, di ba? Kasi doon sa ating law of demand, sinasabi doon na, as price decreases, quantity demanded increases, and vice versa. If price increases, quantity demanded decreases. As long as all other factors affecting demand held constant or yung tinatawag nating ceteris paribus. So dito, hindi ito naging ceteris paribus kasi hindi naging constant yung other factor. So ano yung factor dito? Aside sa price, yung factor dito is the additional income or the additional money supply. So since ang inflation is the public enemy number one, so hindi ahayaan ng government na hindi masolusyonan yung inflation lalo na kung nasa hyperinflation na or yung pinakamalala or pinakamataas na level ng pagtaas ng mga presyo. So ang gagawin ng government is pwedeng magkaroon sila ng pagkontrol sa money supply na umiikot sa economy or papataasan nila yung mga presyo para madaling makuha galing sa household yung excess na money supply. Principle 10, society faced a short run trade off between inflation and unemployment. So, pakitake note ng word na short run trade off between inflation and unemployment. So, balikan natin yung principle 9. Di ba, nagkaroon ng inflation kasi nga kung magpiprint si government ng napakaraming pera is magkakaroon ng inflation. So, dahil sa pagkakaroon ng maraming pera or dahil sa nagkaroon ng monetary injection, tumaas yung spending ng household. So, as with the demand. So, tumaas yung demand. So, ang magiging impact ng pagtas ng demand is yung mga firm papadamihan niya yung pinuproduce nilang goods and services. So, kapag pinataasan nila yung production nila, mga ngailangan sila ng tao. So, mababawasan yung unemployment rate kasi yung dating mga unemployed na tao sa society is magkakaroon ng trabaho dahil doon sa ginawang expansion ng business. So, bakit short run lang? Kasi nga sabi ko, hindi hahayaan ng government na magkaroon ng inflation or stagnant inflation sa economy since inflation is the public enemy number one. So, may mga iba pang factor na makakapag pababa ng unemployment rate. So, hindi lang naman yung inflation rate ang nakakatulong para pababain ang unemployment rate. So, marami pang factors and we will discuss it on our next discussion. That would be all for now. Thank you for watching and listening.